In this video, we're going to look at how to set up a spreadsheet to make a box parametric. I know we've done stuff like this before, but I wanted to just go through slowly and show you how to make sure that this box is uh, parametric and does what you want it to do. Um, it's fairly straightforward, but a lot of people have been asking me about how to use a spreadsheet on some of the other models that we've done. The concept is exactly the same. This is just a simpler shape so that we don't have quite so many things that we have to run through. Uh, but we'll make sure that, that we go through how to calculate each of these parameters to make sure that the box is always a box. So to get started, first thing we're going to do is we are going to look at what version of FreeCAD we're using. Here it is. It's the FreeCAD 021.1. Um, I haven't updated it recently, but I've been checking, and this is the latest version that you download. Uh, the development version is moving along, but I haven't tried that out recently. So, again, your mileage may vary if you're on a different version. I think most of the things I'm doing here will work in the older versions. Shouldn't be a problem. I don't know about development uh, versions because I'm not using those at the moment. So, let's get started. So, we're going to start a new file. And when I start FreeCAD, it starts in part design. If yours doesn't start in part design, you need to select part design if you're going to follow along here. What I'm going to do, do is I'm going to create a part, I'm going to create a body, and then I'm going to create a sketch, and I'm going to create that sketch on the XY plane. First thing I want to do is draw the outline of my box. And in this case, I'm going to use the centered rectangle. I'm just going to draw an outline. It doesn't matter the size right now. And then I'm going to put four holes in the corners. I'm just going to pop those in there. It really doesn't matter where they go for now because we're going to constrain everything. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this outside shape a dimension. Now remember, because we use a centered rectangle, it's already centered around this point, And it's um, going to be maintained around that point. So... I'm just selecting this. I'm going to give it a dimension. Just say OK. I'm going to give that width a dimension. Just say OK. So can, to constrain these holes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all four of them. Make them equal. Then I'm just going to say that this one and this one are symmetrical around that center. And then this one and this one are going to be symmetrical around that center. So now we should have those joined together. That's great. And then I'm going to say this one and this one are in line this way. And I just need to say that this one and this one are in line horizontally and if we look they should all move around the same and there they are so now I'm going to give them a diameter say okay then I'm going to give them a dimension that goes from there to there and I'm going to give them a dimension that goes give them a dimension that goes from there to there and now you can see our whole thing is fully constrained. Everything is fully constrained. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that. And I'm just going to pad it. It doesn't matter what the thickness is. None of the dimensions matter at the moment. So that's the basic outline of our box. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another sketch. I'm going to create it on the XY plane. And... I'm going to show the center. So using this up here allows me to see through the center of this thing, which allows me to see this crosshair. I'm just going to do another centered rectangle, pull it out to where I want it to be. That's good. And then I'm going to constrain that. So I'm going to give it a dimension this way. And say OK. And I'm going to give it a dimension this way. And say OK. And now that's fully constrained too. Then I'm going to make that a through hole. And if we look on the other side, 
our through hole is going in the wrong direction, so I'm going to reverse that. And I'm just going to say OK. So there we have basically our box. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make that box um, driven by a spreadsheet parametrically. So to do that, we're going to go to the spreadsheet workbench. And we're going to start a new spreadsheet. Then in that spreadsheet, we're going to put some dimensions. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to create some labels. So the first thing we're going to create is the box length. That's the outside length of the box. We're going to create the box width. That's the outside width of the box. We're going to create the box height. And then we want to create the inside length. And we want to create the inside width. And we want to create the inside height. Then we're going to create a wall thickness. We're going to use a standard wall thickness the whole way through. And all those holes are the same, so we're going to just create a whole diameter. Now remember, the way we've modeled it is that hole is always going to be a through hole. Now, what we need to do is to alias these to these um, columns. Okay, so normally what I would do is I would select all of these and I'd use the easy alias um, macro, which I have set here. If I did that, it will easy alias all of these. But I'm going to show you how to do it manually because some people don't have the macro or they can't find the macro or whatever the story is with the macro. So I'm just going to show you how to do it manually. That way everybody can do it. So we just type in the alias. So I selected B2. I'm typing in the alias for uh, that I want B2 to be. This next one's box width. So I'm going to type this in. And we're all good there. I'm just going to keep doing that whole thing the whole way through. OK, now I've done all those. You can see the alias up here. So if I look here, inside length, inside height. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to give these some arbitrary numbers. So these are the ones that we're going to use. Uh, we'll always set the outside dimensions of the box. So I'm going to call it 75. I'm going to call it 30. And I'm going to call the box height 25. Now, think about our inside length. Our inside length always has to be smaller than our box length. And it should be smaller by two times whatever the wall thickness is. So let's give the wall thickness a value, let's say 4. And now I can say this inside length equals my box length. I can select it. Minus my wall thickness. And that's going to be times 2 because there are two wall thickness is one at each end. So there's my inside length. And then my inside width is going to work the same way. So it's going to be box width. I have to use the equal sign first. Box width minus wall thickness times 2. And then my inside height is going to be my my box height, so remember to use the equal sign, box height, and the box height minus just wall thickness, because there's only one wall thickness in that case. So now all of these inside dimensions are calculated from these outside dimensions, and they're using this wall thickness as a way to calculate them. And then my whole diameter. I want to make my whole diameter smaller than my wall thickness. So I'm going to call it wall thickness. And it's up to you to choose, but I'm going to say minus 2. So my whole diameters are going to be 2. So that's basically my box is calculated. It's all calculated from here. So I can adjust this. If I say this is now 60, everything's going to adjust that needs to adjust to keep the parametrics working. The problem is if you don't calculate this, you could make the outside length smaller than the inside length, and then the model will break. Okay, 
So let's go back to our model. And now we're going to assign inside the sketch, we're going to assign um, the spreadsheet values. And to do that, I'm actually going to go to window and I'm going to tile it. Now I can see my spreadsheet and my model at the same time. And then I'm going to go into my pad. This is the first pad into that sketch. I'm going to edit it. And then I know I want this, what I want these to be. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to tell it that this one is called spreadsheet and it's box length. And immediately my box is now that length. And then I'm going to go into this one and I'm going to tell it that we are in spreadsheet box width. And I'll say OK. So that's the outside dimensions of my box are now generated that way. Now what we need to do is to tell it where these holes live. So clearly they're going to be the spreadsheet box length. And then they're going to be minus something, right? Because it can't be the same as the box length. So they're going to be minus, and then it's going to be the wall thickness. And that will put it right in the middle of the wall thickness. So let's do that. So let's say spreadsheet again. And then wall thickness. And that'll bring them inside here. Should be a little bit of clearance there. And then this one will be spreadsheet box width minus spreadsheet wall thickness and that brings them inside so now we can go in and have a look we do have a clearance there our whole diameters are fairly large I'm just going to close that and now you can see they're right on the edge there so we might want to adjust how big those whole diameters are and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the pocket and we're going to adjust this so that we get the right pocket dimensions. So this is going to be spreadsheet inside length. This is going to be spreadsheet inside width. And we'll say close. And now you can see we have our box with our holes in it. And then what we're going to do is we are going to affect our thicknesses. So the spreadsheet, this is the, the length of the pad, is going to be the spreadsheet um, box height. And then the depth of the pocket, that is going to be spreadsheet inside height so it's always going to be a wall thickness less than our box height so there it is now we have something that works I'm a little concerned about where my whole diameter is so it's right on the center center that way and what I would say is my hole is maybe a little bit too too big for that wall thickness. So maybe we'll say that's hole thickness. Instead of being minus 2, we'll say minus 2.5. And we'll let that um, modify our hole. Oh. I just realized that what I didn't do the reason the hole looks so big is our diameter is not set to the spreadsheet. 
Oh, spreadsheet. Hold amateur. There we go. Now it looks better. And now I'm going to go back and change that to two. I think two was, was good. So there it is. And you can modify it to whatever you want it to be. Now, I have a box. I have a box that's parametric. And it's basically, I don't want to touch anything that I'm calculating, right? But I can change my wall thickness. So I can make my wall thickness five, for instance. Or I could make my box length 75. And I can make my box width uh, 60. And everything will move parametrically. So because everything is calculated that way, it should never cause the model to fail. So hopefully that helps. Um, it should be the same for almost any shape that you want to do. The only thing is as the shape gets more complex, you have to think a little bit more about how you want those shapes um, to be calculated, how you want each feature to be calculated. What you're really trying to do is you're trying to stop um, a change in a size from making, for instance, this inside length overlap that outside length and destroy your box. So with this square box, it's fairly straightforward because we know our outside length always has to be longer than our inside length by two wall thicknesses. So it always makes it um, the right amount. So picking out what, your, what parameters you're going to use for your calculations and then working out the calculations. And I recommend doing the calculations in the spreadsheet rather than doing them in the sketch themselves. It makes it easier to read and to understand when you come back to this. It makes it easier to understand how that works. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I just wanted to do this because a lot of people ask me, hey, now you've done that, can you show me how to to create a spreadsheet to work with that model. Well, now you know how to do it, you can certainly um, figure that out for any particular model that you want to do. Uh, if you've enjoyed the content, please give it a thumbs up. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, and your subscription won't affect you other than you'll see when I release new videos. Um, you can subscribe to as many channels as you like. Uh, but what it does for me is it helps me to be seen by more people. And the more people that see it, the better it is for me in terms of being able to generate uh, an income to offset the time that I spend making the videos. And then if you do want to contribute, you can always go to Ko-Fi or Coffee or whatever you, I call it coffee. <laughs> you can go to coffee and buy me a coffee, which will actually translate to a beer. And if you uh, want to subscribe to my Patreon, feel free to do that. If you want to become a member of this channel, feel free to do that as well. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate all your support. If nothing else, if you like the video and you want to help me along, share it with your friends, let other people see it. That will help me to get it exposed. So I appreciate it and I will see you in the next one.